There are 17 types of prana, but uh, predominantly 5 types are studied. There are 5 predominant types of prana. So, pranic system is made up of prana, the nadis which is channel, chakra is the cross section of the different nadis. So, there are 5 types of prana studied udan, saman, vyan, apan, and prana itself. All these pranas are supposed to have different physical and emotional function. Udan prana is uh, related to the uh, mental strength and speech and this is acto near the neck and the head and in the head region. So, our face, head, neck activities going on in this region are governed by udan prana. So, it is related to the senses, mental strength, speech uh, at the physical level. At the emotional level, our ability of the expression of thoughts and emotions are connected to udan prana. Then comes uh, uh, prana vayu, prana itself. The prana vayu is mostly active in the chest and thorax area and uh, that is related to respiration, uh, memory perception, sensory perception etcetera and at the emotional level it is connected to the assimilation of information. We all keep getting the different stimuli, but our ability to process the stimuli which we constantly get is different and that difference is caused by the pranavayu. The strength of the pranavayu decides how we assimilate so much information which we receive through our senses, through our cognitive senses. Uh, Saman prana is active in the abdominal area, in the navel and the uh, and around the navel area that is responsible for the uh, efficiency in the digestion, metabolism and nourishing. And at the emotional level, it is uh, related to our power of discrimination, our ability to distinguish right and wrong, our ability to distinguish what the yogic tradition says sad, asat, truth and untruth. These abilities, this ability of discrimination is related to the samana prana. Vyana prana that is active throughout the body and this prana is responsible for or it, it governs the circulatory system and nervous system. And uh, at the emotional level, it is related to coherence and integration of self. What aspect we integrate within, how we maintain the coherence in different aspect of our knowing, our emotionality and our action that is uh, governed by Vyana Prana. Apana prana is uh, more active in the sacral area and that is related to elimination, birthing and menstruation. At the psychological level, it is related to our ability to let go. In our life, we keep facing things, sometimes these are unpleasant things, sometimes uh, these became these become irrelevant after once they occur. So, when these things occur that might be relevant, but when we re reflect and uh, in the uh, in the hindsight they may not be relevant, but still many of us keep uh, chewing those things, keep churning those things that is that becomes a psychological issue. So, our ability to let go things, let go memories which are no longer relevant, which can only cause pain, which can only ca cause hard feelings we must be able to let go these. Apan prana is connected to that aspect of our emotional well being. So, as I explained uh, pranavayu, nadi system and chakra, these are the components 
of uh, uh, pranic system. The right side of the picture gives the name of some of the predominant nadis, predominant uh, channels of energy. And it is said in the yogic tradition that there are 72,000 nadis. Uh, and these are some of the predominant nadis like uh, Matrika, Tikta, Madhavi, uh, uh, Vishwa, uh, Avantika, uh, Shankini, Shivali, Sita, Varuna, Pusa. These are some predominant nadis as mentioned in the um, um, pranic system. At the cross section of these nadis, we have chakras. So, there are thousands of chakras. In fact, on the all uh, uh, on all the joints of the body, we have chakras. So, there are so many chakras. What is what are the predominantly studied chakras in the pranayam and in the pranic system are seven, which we are going to discuss. But before we discuss uh, chakras, uh, the left side of this uh, figure mentions three predominant nadis, Ida, Pingala and Sushmana. Uh, uh, Pingala is uh, reflected in the, uh, in the blue or violet color, uh, Ida is reflected in the uh, green color. So, Ida if you remember that is a Chandra Nadi which, uh, uh, which promotes the parasympathetic system. Uh, Pingala is called Surya Nadi, it is it promotes the sympathetic uh, nervous system and at their balance is Sushmana. When both these nadis, the, when the energy is balanced in both these nadis, Sushmana nadi become active. <coughs> then there are seven chakras, uh, uh, Muladhar chakra at, this, uh, at the perineum, uh, Swadhisthan chakra which is between the navel area and perineum. Manipurak chakra which is adjacent to the navel area, uh, Anahat chakra is uh, very close to heart, uh, Vishuddhi chakra which is uh, uh, around the neck area, Agnya chakra which is at the forehead and Brahmarand uh, which is slightly above the uh, forehead and there is also uh, chakra which is not mentioned here is Sahastrar which is at the top of the skull and it is compared with the lotus with the thousand petals. And the yogic process helps the sadhakas to get their energy moving from the lower spaces to the higher spaces, from the lower chakras to the higher chakras. There is a whole system about the chakras, uh, uh, there is also a system of the sadhana and the concept called kundalini yoga which predominantly works and take the reference of these three nadis and the seven chakras. We are not discussing uh, those things in this session. We are predominantly understanding how our breathing is connected to our well-being. And we need to look at this metaphysical aspect of the breathing exercises which is given in a great detail and sophistication in the yogic tradition. So, purpose is just to familiarize yourself about, about this system. Those who are interested can pursue the different lines, they can pursue this, this as a knowledge system. Our purpose is to look at how we can use some of the methods for our well-being and evolving as an individual and evolving as a professional. The most interesting interpretation of chakras uh, I heard from uh, very renowned spiritual guru Shri Shri Ravi Shankar ji. He, we all know that he is the founder of Art of Living Foundation. It conducts many social activities along with the spiritual uh, activities. They teach Sudarshan Kriya, uh, which is the basic practice they, they teach in most of, the, most of their programs. But Art of Living Foundation is also very, very active in the social space, in the organic agriculture to river rejuvenation to prison reforms to general education to so many other things which are very relevant for the societal development. So, the interpretation of the chakras and the associated energy I found very interesting in the explanations of Shri Shri Ravi Shankar ji. What he says that 
chakras are the center of energy that is similar to what pranic uh, uh, science what the yogic science also says. He goes further and explains what is the nature of energy associated with those chakras. So, uh, depending on the negative spiral or uh, vicious cycle or the positive spiral called the virtuous cycle, the energy is reflected in our personality. So, energies are there, everybody has that energy, everybody has these chakras. If these chakra or the energy associated with these chakra is in the virtuous cycle, we look at the positive expression, life affirming expressions of uh, these energies. And if these energies get trapped into the vicious cycle, not very pleasant expression of that energy. So, uh, Muladhar chakra is related to enthusiasm. So, energy at the Muladhar is reflected in the form of enthusiasm. When this is inversely uh, active, we suffer from dullness. She, she explained that depression is in a way situation where our own mental energy starts working against us. So, the same energy can be reflected in the enthusiasm and that energy can be expressed in our dullness and depression. We come to the Swadhisthan chakra which is between the navel area and the perineum. This is in parallel to our gonads. Energy associated with the Swadhisthana chakra may be used only for procreation, may be for the sexual pleasure. This same energy can also be expressed in the form of creativity. The creativity can get expressed in various forms, we all know about it. The same energy can be wasted in unhealthy sexual activities and same energy can be used for the expression of creativity. Manipurak chakra which is in parallel to the navel area, that energy either can be reflected in generosity and the joy associated with generosity or this can get perverted and reflected in jealousy and greed and that result into lot of parigraha, lot of hoarding. That is why uh, you might remember that in, uh, in the yama of yama aspect of uh, yoga, that is the, which is the first step in the yoga, we call, uh, we talk about a parigraha. So, a parigraha is possible when Manipurak chakra is active. If Manipurak chakra is not active, it is very difficult to exercise, it is very difficult to follow a parigraha. Coming above uh, the chakra very closely located near heart area that is called anahat chakra. Anahat chakra when uh, is positively active, people can experience love, people can experience associated compassion. Uh, when this uh, chakra, when this energy is perverted, same energy can be reflected in fear and hatred toward others. Above uh, Anahat chakra is Vishuddhi chakra. In the Vishuddhi chakra, which is located in the neck area, uh, when energy is in a virtuous cycle at that level or the energy related to the Vishuddhi chakra is in the virtuous cycle, we experience gratefulness. But when this energy in the vicious cycle, we experience grief, we experience sadness and that naturally that energy uh, works against us. Agnya chakra, our energies can go up to Agnya chakra. And if the Agnya chakra is emitting the energy in the virtuous cycle, that is reflected in awareness, alertness, our ability to make decision, our ability to distinguish things, our ability for the discrimination, our ability to make judgments about things. 
However, if the same energy is in the vicious cycle, it is reflected or rather it go wasted in the form of anger. And as we mentioned about Sahastrasar, this is the crown chakra. If energy reaches there, we only experience joy. There is no uh, opposite of Anand if energy reaches to the Sahastra. So, Sahastrasar is where there is no negativity left and uh, we only experience joy. We can uh, look at uh, our terminology as well of the indigenous uh, positive psychology. We talk about dukha, sukha, sukh, suvidha, asvidha. So, all these terms uh, have negative and positive uh, connotations. However, there is no opposite to anand. Anand is uh, the translation of bliss and there is no opposite of that. The purpose of yoga is to experience anand in the day to day life. We may acquire suvidha or convenience, we may acquire happiness or sukha, we may acquire pleasure, but that always remain uh, time bound. When we acquire anand, it is consistent process, it is not based on the external object. So, the purpose of yoga is to able to discover bliss, able to discover the comfort, able to discover peace within ourselves, not outside self. So, uh, our happiness and our joy is not dependent on outside when we engage into the yogic practice. Pranayam is that intervention which help us to raise the energy level which is which can be properly directed towards the life affirming non egoist and non selfish ways of expression. So, chakras are extensively studied in uh, many uh, healing processes in the healing schools. We are not discussing that, but if you are interested you can certainly pursue your studies and uh, experiential exercises around those.